As a note before we begin this video, it's pretty long and it goes in depth on how to learn all this stuff, but I'll also put in the description a few keys and hints that will help you understand certain levels of the blood web that I do go over, but it'll just help you refer to it if you ever have to refer back to this video. So do enjoy and have a good one. Hello everybody, welcome to this amazing game of Dead by Daylight. Today I get an opportunity to show off how I level uh, Killer up from level 1 to approximately 40 through 900,000 blood points. Uh, because I saved up and I'm going to prestige a killer that has very little left on them and get some oppor get the opportunity to show you how I level up and get as much as I can and play the uh, entity and allow it to work for me and take away some of my blood web so that I can level faster. Uh, sometimes you might not want that as you want specific items while you're leveling up, but if you're doing what I'm doing, which is prestiging as fast as possible on certain char uh, characters, it... It just becomes a numbers game because you don't always need to get items that will particularly help you so you can skip over a couple of things. I do want to always get perks because I want the perks to help me out as I do play the killer that I am leveling up even though you know you lose everything. So uh, what is prestiging? What does it do? Prestiging is once you hit level 50 that you can reset your character, all their items, all their perks, and you get a bloody cosmetic. It also apparently, supposedly rumor has it, increases the chance of finding rare items on the blood web. But we don't know how much. So it could be like a 1% additional chance to find rare items. So it's really up to you whether you want to do it. I spent over a year and a half playing this game and I refused to prestige my killers, which is why half of them are not. But I then began to just take this journey simply because I have nothing left to do. <laughs> so I'm now doing it, which has been a waste of my time, but hey, you know, I do love this game and I want something to do so I'm just prestiging killers as we go along so if you're new to my channel welcome so what what are what is everything that prestige does uh, you heard that it gives you the cosmetic it resets you completely and that not doing it totally up to you uh, but you get the bloody cosmetic will show it off so when you hit the button here at level 50 brings this up you hit okay and now I am prestige one nurse with a bloody weapon that's your first one. You'll always get the weapon first. I believe it's body second and mask third. I believe. So as we start with level one through nine, you are essentially just stuck getting everything. So there's no specific order. You have to get it all. There is no entity, no trick, no rhyme, no reason. You're not guaranteed a perk on these levels either. They're random. Sometimes you can get two. Sometimes you always get one. At levels 5, 10, 15, you are always guaranteed to get at least one tier of the killer's uh, unique teachable perks. So as you see, we're not getting anything. We just had to power through clicking all these. The purchasing, uh, purchasing the items, the amount in which they cost is reliant on the color uh, and rarity, essentially. Uh, brown being common is only worth 3,000. Mystery boxes are temporary, so if you're looking at this in the future, they'll just be uh, normal mystery boxes. They cost the same as the color they would, but due to the holiday event, they're half price, so I'm going for these. If you happen to have these, get them. And so I was given Strider 1, which is always guaranteed at level 5. Uh, then random perk, always get the perk, but I have no choice, so this is just costing me blood points, and we just go through it. Up until we hit level 10, and then I believe that's where we get our entity. So really relying on some luck to get good perks here, or perks at all, if we're starting to get, and that's good. So as we get through this, there's not too many decisions. Early level's pretty... So again, Entity will never wake up. Just keep going through this. Alright, so we hit level 10. I believe it normally would forewarn you that um, the Entity has awakened. And now it will start to take some of your add-ons and items. So, first thing to notice is that there is a perk actually pretty close to the center that I can take. The moment two perks are available to choose... One will always be taken by the entity once you take the other. So, the entity comes at round five. So, by round two, I can force the entity to take one. On top of that, the entity must follow the line that connects it. So, the entity will not take the antiphobia and jump to another one. Instead, it will cross over here into the white knit cone. And what that'll do is, because I can no longer buy white knit cone, which connects to the wooden horse, it will eat 
the wooden horse at the same time. Essentially now that removes 6,000 worth uh, 6,000 points worth of items that I no longer have to buy, which improves how fast my level is. So if I want to make this as effective as possible, I will grab Agitation, which is actually a perk I would like. And now it began Thantophobia. I will grab my Mystery Boxes, because they cost half the normal because of what they are. Now remember, Mystery Boxes in the future, once the holiday is over, will no longer do such a thing. Now, whether or not I want to claim this item changes how the entity works, because the entity is no longer connected to anything. Once I take the white knit comb, it will then go to the a random outermost layer and take something at random. Being the white knit comb and the faint region are on the innermost layer, it will automatically take the mystery box next. But I want the mystery box due to its cheaper cost, so I'll take this in order for it to take the comb. If I took the faint region first, it would still take the comb because it's available. There you go. So that's out of the way. We're now level 11. Uh, with only one perk on the realm, I believe it takes five levels for this to um, take effect. So I'm going to go ahead and take those. Now, anxious gra... gra <laughs> anxious... Uh, can't say words. Anxious gasp is not a perk I'll be using in the future or anytime soon. So I'll worry about getting everything else. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, entity did not come. Oh, entity comes after the sixth one then. My apologies. I believe it was five. Could have been six. One, two, three. Now up here is a mystery box. Again, half the price of its value, and I typically would want that over this because this will guarantee me a rare item, and this costs three thousand. But I will obviously have to work for two, four thousands. But no matter what, even if I grab the three thousand, I'll have to get these two. So we're gonna work towards that mystery again. All right, so there, one, two, three, four, five. I was right. Um, mystery box, if I take that, the entity will take the, the wreath. Obviously, it's the last thing. But if there was more, um, if I take the wreath, it would go to the outermost, which is mystery box, which I actually want, which I got a really crappy item, so I might as well take the wreath. Crap. <laughs> Sometimes it's risky with those boxes. Now, on majority of my levels, like I said, I always want to pick up a perk, uh, especially someone like me who has every single teachable unlocked. I need to get the perks out of the way with every level because if I get the nurse to prestige three and I do every level, then it's very important that I keep removing a perk off the web so that I can eventually have all the perks. Um, it also helps remove that perk from respawning later, which it can do. So we're gonna go ahead and just take the perk immediately. I do want the mystery box, so I'm gonna go straight for that. And I can either get this honeycomb if I want it for a thousand more, or I'll take a cheaper route and just buy the 3,000. I know, personally, I will not use the honey, uh, the uh, not honey cone. Did I call it a pine cone? All right, so there's several more on this blood web, and how this will work is after five, it'll start, so I need to get everything I want. Uh, once I do three, I have my perk, so now I'm safe to do whatever it is I want. It is going to take the dark cincture, kincture? I can't say things. I'm bad, but it's going to take this one no matter what because it's the, uh, the last outermost layer. There are three circles, inner, middle, outer. So I can just start taking everything I want. Now I want the cheapest things because I don't particularly care for these point gains. They help reduce the cost, but I just want the cheapest one because I'll be prestiging. So once I take the last cheapest item, it'll randomly take one of these higher ones and I'll take the last one. If I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. I believe that it takes the most expensive ones first, but I could be wrong. Or it takes the rare ones because they're rare. So we're in the, there's two perks, so once I grab one, the other one begins to get devoured. And I want Nurse's Calling because I like it more, but I also want this mystery box. So if I do not want the entity to spawn on the third time and I really want the mystery box, it takes four for me to set up for a Nurse's Calling and four, and the other two would be for the mystery box. So I can do one, two, three, four. On the fifth one, the entity would appear to take one, but now that I don't have to worry about it, the entity has not appeared, it's not going to take anything. I'll take the mystery box. The entity has now appeared and spawned over here. It will take the closest, first it always takes the closest perk it can to where it spawns. It's going to take Nurse's Calling. Unless I eat Nurse's Calling, then it will automatically take Save the Best for Last. Then from Save the Best for Last, it'll devour that mystery box. And it will devour this wreath unless I take it. And to be fair, I don't like these regions so much 
because I don't use them myself very much. So I'll take the wreath and I'll let it take the next outermost item. Being it is now connected to the torn bookmark, I can either choose that or take a Shriek Wraith, which I actually do want the bookmark. Level 16 seems to be slightly less than the rest, so we'll just work our way. Grab everything I want. It spawned because it wanted to take the Shadowborn. Um, now I'll take these two because I don't like have much of a choice. So back to level 17. Getting more and more. Now if I wanted this, I have to make sure I set up for it because it's in the outermost layer. But I want Tinker and all the cheap items. So I'm going to take Tinker immediately and then work for the cheap items. Which the mystery box to me was the cheapest. And this is an outermost layer and that's an outermost. So I'll take the, one of the outermosts that's connected to the wooden horse because if I didn't, and I took the, uh, let's say I took the Cypress Memento, it had quite the chance to take the comb and then work its way to the horse. But I want it to take the more expensive item out of the way. Because I'm trying to level up quickly, and I don't particularly need the Cypress Memento. So to save the best for last, not a perk I particularly want, but watching for how expensive these things are, it's likely to take this first, which means it'll work down this pathway. So we'll quickly take all of this, and I will make sure I work towards here. I want to take my mystery box. I want to take the spoon, which it then has to go to the next layer, which is the shroud, and I get one of the teeth, it takes the other, and I got everything I wanted at a cheaper route. So again, here I have two items on the outermost layer I don't particularly care for as a killer. I don't like the cut coin, I don't like Azeroth's key, so we're just gonna grab the perk, Bitter Murmur, and grab all the cheapest, regardless if I like them or not. If I like the pine cone, take it. If not, um, grab the other things, which the additional blinks are favored. So as it came down here, it was connected to the bad man's keepsake. So I took the bad man's keepsake, so it could not. And since it's no longer connected to things, it took Azrov's key, and I got everything again I wanted. Looking at this one, we have two perks. So now we can see that Dying Light is connected to Moldy Oak, which also would cut off Fragile Wheeze. Uh, if I were to go get Thantophobia, it would then immediately go for Dying Light, take out the Moldy Oak, and eventually, which also ultimately takes out Fragile Wheeze. Now, because it's got a sideways connection and also an inner connection, I believe it focuses more on the sideways first and works its way to the more expensive perks. So... I believe they changed a couple times, but let's let's double check me on this. So I'm gonna get this pocket watch just for testing sake. It should go over to matchbox. I'm correct. Now it'll go down to the wreath. And I could let the mystery box be taken. In fact, it's 2,000, which is cheaper, but it also takes out 5,000 at the same time, where then I would spend 6,000. If I were to allow it to go here and I take this mystery box, I'd spend 2,000 here while it eats that, 3,000 here, while it eats that, and then I have to eat another 3,000, whereas it would eat... Oh, that's actually a great thing to... If the last item that would be taken would cut off this key, for example, if it took the Tangerine Wreath and all I had was this or the Mystery Box, I could eat the Tangerine Wreath and it will not eat the Mystery Box and instead go to the Outer Realm because it does not eat multiple items as its last move. So it will always reset itself. It's a really confusing thing to do, I know. But so for example, that's exactly what's gonna happen. Torn bookmark, I'll take it. If I take ten, ten acre wreath, I can't say words, sorry. It will not take mystery box. The reason is because it cannot eat multiple at once. So I end up having to take all of them. That was a play I had to make in the end while I was trying to be sneaky. So again, this seems pretty basic. It's gonna eat the Pied Piper, which is a thing I don't care so much for. Get the mystery box, and it's just gonna work its way straight down, so. Very easy level, nothing special to play in there. Uh, Whispers, now, this is an interesting web. It's either gonna take the Gasp or the Shattered Glasses, and I kind of want all of these stopwatches. The, the pocket watches are my favorite, in regards to add-ons for the nurse. So my optimal path would be to take that, and since there's no second perk, once I take Whispers, the entity does not spawn, but I guarantee I have that. Now I can get all my pocket watches, 
It'll take the anxious grass. I could take the spoon, which then forces it to take the other expensive item first. Then I could take the next pocket watch because it's gonna take the torn book. So it, just to prove it won't take that pocket watch, I'll take a mystery box, takes that, which now it has to take the raven wreath, and that's that. So this is how you manipulate the entity to do everything that you want. From start to finish, this is the most I can teach. If I didn't get Strider, uh, it would go down randomly between these two. I, I don't know if there's some sort of RNG which decides the path that it takes. But again, I want the pocket watch on this blood web and I can let everything go. And so we're gonna grab the mystery box at half price. Um, I don't care so much about this add-on and I want the strider. I want my pocket watch and all the cheapest items. So now if I let these two open, which I don't want the Azeroth's key, and I don't care so much about the dull bracelet, I'll take all the other semi-cheap items and that removes all the expensive items. Again, I'm not gonna use the cheap items. Now when you're playing, obviously you need to find out what items you want as killer or survivor. You want to find out kind of what you use. So if this is your first time playing, a little research on the wiki will help you figure that out. Um, Strider again, my only uh, perk to pick on this web. And a mystery box right there. Ooh. So if I go for the mystery box, I'm going to have to play this in kind of a zigzag motion. We're going to go for the Ivory Mori so that I open my pathway up to the mystery box and take the strider. Then, since it's going to take the closest item, it's going to be this item regardless for, I believe, ooh. Let's see if it takes the rarer, which is um, the mystery box. I'm going to risk it. No, it's the closest item. I'm right. Okay. Just had to double check because I've never sat here and done all the numbers for this. But I'll take the mystery box, which then takes the comb. It's gonna take the pine cone next, which I should have taken the horse, but now nah, I got stuck with the side press. I should have taken the horse to the comb. It would have taken the side press for being the runner. We hit level 25. What level 25 does is now permanently unlocks double perks per, uh, per blood whip. Again, sorry, my, I like to mix words up. So now I'll always have a decision between perks. I have Hex, Thrill Hunt, and Enduring. Enduring for Nurse, not that good, but we have a Memento Mori, which is ultra rare, very expensive on this blood web, um, and a stopwatch near that. If I want this entity to just start devouring items really fast, I'm just gonna take the Hex, which caused it to spawn as soon as I take it, so instead of waiting five turns, it was only three. I'll take my Memento, I'll take the Pocket Watch, and now it has to work its way to the mystery box here, but I want the more expensive mystery box to see what's inside. I like taking chances. Scratch coin, not my favorite. So I'll take this mystery box, which then must take the torn page. I didn't get a good reward. And now it's just up to what item I want. And I really don't care, so I'll let it eat it. Moving on, double perks. I love Remember Me, so that's the way I'll go. And as much as I want this, uh, once I take Remember Me, the next play it's gonna take is this wreath, which destroys the mystery box. So we're gonna try to do cheaper items. Grab this, take that cheap item, and I don't have much of a choice. Got a pudding here if I want that. Again, remember me, another item I really love, but it'll start up here and take those three items if I play this as I think I will. Black Ward's not too bad either, uh, but I don't use add-ons very much as nurse, so I'll let it eat the Black Ward and I'll try to save as many of the cheaper items, get my pudding, and take these down here. Now, I know I'm going very fast. It's because I, by, by simple sight, I've got it down to what I really like. Uh, both these perks kind of butt, so I have a choice. I can go a slightly more expensive route and have the entity eat unnerving the comb, and then once it gets to the pine cone, it'll eat both this 3,000 and 6,000 item, which sounds like a great idea, so I'm going to do that. And once it works its way down there, I'm also going to start taking out the items up here. Because I want the more cheaper route. So we're going to take that comb, this comb, and because I don't like the clear region, at least I got add-ons I might use. Maybe. Again, Brutal Strength or Thrill of a Hunt. I'm not a huge fan of either on Nurse, but going down here, it'll take Brutal Strength, work its way to either the Spoon or Torn Book, and then down one more time. And it seems that it would eat quite a lot if I allowed that. So we're going to go ahead and eat these. Doesn't seem like I'm going to have the opportunity to stop it. So we're going to have to play by ear on what this item decides to do. And we'll take the other side. 
As it goes for spoon, it must go to the right, so I will take what's directly under the spoon. Now, don't be confused that it reset and couldn't go down. That's just it. the way visually it works. It'll still work that way. And I want it to come down one more time to devour these two items. So I'll take this shroud. And because I kind of do want a Memento Mori, those are fun for me. I'm going to take the Ultra Rare and let it eat the last item. So I got what I want, and I let it devour as much as it could. Remember Me 3 would be pretty good, but if I didn't take Remember Me 3 instead to throw... <laughs> Throw the hunt. Once it got down to the coin, it devours these three items over here, which is very cost effective for me. But the problem is, cost effective is not always the way to go. Now, again, pocket watch. Love the item. I kind of want it. How do I get that? Well, if I get the, if I get, remember me, it's gonna spawn here, and I only have two turns to get up there. So I need to prep a small path that way. I'm gonna do one so that by the time I get up here, it will take the dull bracelet and then I can get the watch guaranteed. Which it has a lot of choices to make here, but Remember Me is a perk I really do desire. So, got my pocket watch, and then we'll start taking these cheaper items down here while it now has to work up here. Like I said, once it's connected to something on the same outer realm, it goes for that. Or, even if it connects to back upwards, it usually takes that path back up to take the item. So there's a lot of things you can do and as these get more complicated it's really on you to figure it out so again I could probably manipulate it to go right and take these three if I'm lucky I don't actually think I have enough for that but we're gonna try no nope, I don't because remember once I take the cheapest uh, or the last turn it cannot devour multiple so because I do it resets itself up there and because it's up there and connected to another outer, it's going to move sideways and I get the dark tincture. Tincture? Cincture? How do they want to say it? Ooh, hello. That's not good. All right, I thought that was good. I was excited. So play with your food or brutal strength. Both I really don't care about. And this blood web's all messy. Uh, but there is an interesting play. If I go for brutal strength, it can take that and take that breath away from me. Take the dull bracelet, work its way up here, which then it will eat these two, and then it can come down to eat the piper if I allow it. But that's if there's even enough perks to do so or items. So working its way down, the last move I'm going to be able to get, it won't work, but I'm going to take that, forces it to eat those two, and I'll take the spin. Though there was a memento mori, I don't need all of them, just a one or two will work by the time I prestige again. Deerstalker is pretty good. Brutal Strength, not my favorite, but if I take the Brutal Strength now, it will remove it forever from the blood webs. I don't have to worry about it. And it's also on a bad pathway if I were to try to take this. And if I let it take the Deerstalker, it can remove these two. So I think I, I'm i okay with it. I don't use Deerstalker that much, so I'll let it go. We'll take away its additional path here and then let it go down to the comb. Which then I'll take the matchbox. I do not want Macmillan's Flanks Bone, but I really don't want a Murky Region either. So I'll take the Bone myself. I, I rather the Bone than the Region, because making the Mist darker for yourself is kind of silly as a killer. So we have Tinker, Enduring, Enduring not favorable, uh, but also very unfavorable with the direction it's in. However, Tinker is in a very favorable spot, so I think I will take Enduring, because again, it'll devour the... Um, the gift it'll work its way down devour two more items and now I get my pick of two more which I'll take ah, I'll take both no I have much of a choice all right Thanophobia 3 enduring enduring's in a spot to take pretty good items there and Thanophobia is not so we're gonna take Thanophobia now this is pretty confusing because it can't cut off anything but the Mori. If it comes down here, it'll bounce back up, and it'll bounce back up again before bouncing down. Because even though it's connected on the same level, it is also connected to an outer level, and it'll work it that way up there. So I'll prevent it from going up there. I'll let it eat the Mori, because that's expensive. And then I'll take what I want, which to be honest, isn't much. I don't want the Cypress Mori, really. But if it starts up here, I have no choice. Okay, so it's gonna take this that or side press I'll take the side press I'll take this so I can have that simple as that running a little long bug points but I think we got our point through 
Uh, we have our Devour Hope. Let's see. Devour Hope's in a decent spot to take one other item of cheap value, uh, but Bloodhound's not my favorite. So we'll take Devour Hope because I want it. I'll let uh, I'll let the Bloodhound work its way down, take one item because I don't particularly need it. And that's that. Could have taken the cheap red right down there. Ooh. No one escapes death. That is valuable. And so is this flannel. The enduring line's pretty bad, but so we'll just have to work with what we've got. I can get the flannel before that disappears. It'll go across to that. And there is no cutting corners in this one, so I can guarantee I take the spoon. Keep it as cheap as possible. Alright, uh, definitely not unrelenting. Oh, goodness. Uh, it actually might be unrelenting. Uh, the save the best for last can remove a total of three items, where unrelenting can only remove two. But the path to unrelenting is more expensive, I believe. So if I'm not mistaken, that'll be four, nine, thirteen thousand, that'd be two, five. Is that really? Two, five, eleven thousand. Cheaper removes ten thousand. Removes fifteen thousand. That's. Hmm. Oh, to be fair. I don't. I, I really don't like save the best for last. I don't do chase too much. So we're out of uh, we're out of blood points, and we hit level thirty-eight. We were at about nine hundred thousand. I said um, I said a million gets you to forty. So what we're gonna do is I have five hundred fifty iridescent shards, and I own every single teachable in the game. So what I typically save these shards for is a boost of two hundred thousand blood points. So I'll go ahead and purchase those, which will help us keep leveling. I really warn people away from buying the seven hundred fifty costing teachables if you're trying to get the blood points because they only give you 250,000 it's a joke to cost 250 more iridescent shards and give you only 50,000 more blood points so uh, try to keep it at the 550s if you can they reset every week so you can keep purchasing these every time you get shards you get iridescent shards um, a maximum of 10 per match it's one per every minute in the match you're playing so you know, 10 minute long match maxes you out for that match Back to the blood web. I'm gonna take the unrelenting and just take cheaper paths while it eats all of that. That was a pocket watch. I almost regret that. I'll take the cheaper route to get to level 39. All right, so we have ruin. That's a very valuable perk, and this can eat a total of three perks up there. So we'll just jump right on that. There's no way that I can get it to eat any of these other perks, so I'll just try to take the cheapest routes I can. Be done with that. Level 40, as I said. I still have 47 blood points. Let's work on this. Let's see. We have Dying Light or Shadowborn. So Shadowborn, if I'm lucky, will either take out these two or it can take out these three. So 7, 10, 13,000 or just 10. So I'll protect that side by simply going to get Dying Light. And to prevent it from coming down here, we take the Cincture, and it will next move down here and take out these items, which I'm fine with. Now, I want to test if I'm lucky enough for it to start up here, even though I'll lose a Pocket Watch, to which now I'll sacrifice the Pocket Watch too, but that is a Mystery Box that's cheap. Nah, as much as I love it, I want the Mystery Box that's cheap. Take the wooden horse, and I'll take it. If it wasn't a mystery box, I would have let it eat the item. We got whispers. And we got unrelenting. Again, perks I don't really care for. And unfortunately, unrelenting is in a very odd and bad spot, so we'll see how I want to play it. Uh, but I don't think I want it coming down this way. I don't want it going up there either. So we'll likely stop it in its tracks. I want to reset into a different area. So in order to do that, I gotta immediately cut off its section, which now it'll take that, and I'll cut that off so it starts on the other side. The only thing I can do, I, it's probably gonna eat the mystery box. Oh, went for the more expensive route. Again, I'm not 100% sure if it always goes for the rare items. I can't guarantee that, but I'll go for the mystery box now that it's available to me and get a cheaper level up. 77,000 blood points to go. Devour Hope 3, not, uh, not an amazing but unrelenting is also in an equally bad spot, so I'm just going to go for 
this, start that up. I can stop it from taking the horse to reset it. I don't care to lose my mystery box, because it's cheap. Gotta love cheap, cheap, cheap. Take my pocket watch. Now I get a choice between two items. Let's see. So I can just charge. I don't care about either of them, to be honest. And we got level 43, so this is how it goes from here on out. I even got no at three. I'm just going right for it. And I'll lose that memento, and that's fine. Um, I don't mind if it takes a wreath that does not got an extra 3,000, so I'm okay with that. It's gonna, if it comes up here, that's good. Uh, let's watch and see what happens. Nope, but I'll take the Ivory Mori to make it refresh on an Outer Realm, and then now it'll take that matchbox, to which I'll take my comb, and now it takes another expensive thing, level 44, with approximately a million one hundred thousand blood points. Um, this is about what we ended up with. So, we're level 44, I'll cancel it here. I've only got 7,000 blood points left. Um, so this is what we have, as 40 levels on killer. Uh, I'd probably be running Noed, remember me. I actually got a pretty nifty setup here. I don't so much like that I didn't get any agitation, because agitation one's not that good. Three is amazing, but well, you need three. Uh, so we'll probably what end up with Anphobia. Not my favorite perk set, but that's what we have for now. Um, Nurse's Calling is all right, just not as long as I like it. The 8 meters really makes a difference because at rank uh, rank 1 it is 20 meters, rank 3 is 28. The 8 meters makes a difference for me. And there we go. So we have plenty of add-ons to get me through. We didn't get too many streamers to help bo uh, boost my blood points, but now that I work back to a million, I'll be using all my moris, I'll be using everything that I have here. Um, I got three puddings to use, and I will still be leveling her up for six more levels to get the prestige. And on top of that, I now have her new bloody weapon, um, which a lot of people ask me, where do I get this? I believe this came with um, Anniversary. This came with uh, another Anniversary, I believe. Two Anniversary items? It was an anniversary. They just released a new set of cool weapons at one point. And then we have my bloody weapon, which is all vain. And so that's it. That's the tricks that I have. Hopefully you found this video informative. It's a little long, but we went over everything. And I hope that you guys got what you wanted out of it. So thank you all for watching. It was a bit long. I do apologize. But I wanted to make sure that this video covered what we do from the beginning to the end and give you all the tips on the entity and how it works and how to utilize it to your advantage. So now you know how the entity works, how it thinks, and how you can make it work for you. So you just read your maps properly, go back if you need to reference how the entity will move. It's just like a mini chess game. It's kind of fun in its own right. And that's it. So with the rank reset, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the fog. And as always, good game.